Hey, this is Brent with Lackens Motorsports. On this episode, we are going to look at a very potent combination, the 363 small block Ford. So in times past on previous videos, I've mentioned how certain engine combinations, uh, bore stroke, cylinder head, camshaft, that sort of thing, uh, really surprises me from time to time. So you run across different combinations that really perform better than others. Um, I'll go over one of those today. Uh, it's a 363 small block forward build that, that I did uh, a couple years ago. And it cracked right at around 600 horsepower. Uh, we'll get into that here in a second. But um, there's, a, there's a picture of uh, the finished product um, complete with carburetor and distributor and electric water pump and all those goodies. So Let's uh, let's take a look at the uh, the first step, and that's the engine block. So for the small block Ford, you have several options available to you for a good aftermarket engine block. You have Dart, you have uh, World Products, and you have the Ford Motorsports blocks. Uh, what you're looking at, what we used for this particular build, was a World Products block. And uh, of course, we start with um, uh, what you can tell how beefy the blocks are, and they have the out the extra outside bolts for the heads. If you choose to use um, a, a particular head, there's not many of them that have perimeter bolt holes, but just a very very beefy block. I uh, don't think you could tear one of these up. It would take a lot to do it. Um, as is our custom with all engine builds, uh, blocks, all blocks, including aftermarket blocks, get the whole gamut of machining processes. Uh, boring honing with torque plates, align honing the mains, square decking the decks. And if you see a block manufacturer that says those things do not need to be done to their blocks because they are machined so well from uh, rough machining um, one you need to plan on doing the machine work and two you may want to take whatever else they say with a grain of salt so um, all the machine work is done as you can see here in this picture um, again very beefy block uh, brass freeze plugs um, oil gallery plugs on the outside for if you want to run dry sump oil pumps that sort of thing um, a lot of extra support around the lifter bores and uh, I think this was a 4125 by 3.4 uh, combination so right at 363 cubic inches um, you can also see the coated cam bearings uh, that we used on this block For the rotating assembly, we went with a Molnar crankshaft and Molnar rods. So, uh, Molnar makes some really high quality parts, and uh, they offer a lot of uh, a lot of people know about their connecting rods, but they also offer uh, steel cranks that are really beefy. So that's what we went with for this particular combination. And for the pistons, it's hard to beat a Mollet piston. Uh, their Power Pack series pistons come with uh, generally a, a really uh, modern ring pack, such as a one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter ring pack, is, is what this piston has. Uh, they are coated uh, on the skirts and on the crowns. They have um, ample valve reliefs, and they are very, very light. So. As you can see there, it's an inboard pin boss uh, design, makes everything really light. The pins are short, so it's a very good combination, makes for a light bob weight, light rotating assembly. 
There's another shot of the crankshaft looking down the snout. Good products. So here's a shot of the uh, assembled short block and we'll go over a few more pictures here uh, to deal with that. Um, Molly pistons you can see there in the bores and we'll use some uh, chromatic head gaskets. Uh, we want BAM lifters, oh, I'm sorry, Crower lifters on those. And uh, you can see on the block that we had to uh, flip the link bar on the front driver's side set of lifters to clear uh, the, the boss on the block. It's really beefy inside, so there was some clearancing that needed to be done to clear the lifters. For the front end, if it's a steel cam, I usually, well, I always use a steel thrust plate. We have a new steel thrust plate here. It's shown, and uh, when I torque fasteners, I always put a dab of paint on it to uh, quell my OCD. Here's where we're checking piston valve clearances, and uh, I generally use clay to do that so that I can get a good idea of uh, the radial clearance on the valve and the valve relief. Had plenty, as you can see, on, on all counts, depth and radial clearances both. And then we're going to take a shot at <clears throat> looking and see how the, the rod bearings look against the shoulders of the, the crank, the rod journals of the crank. This is something that needs to be done uh, pretty much on every build just to make sure that the, the radius uh, up against the cheek of the, the rod journal um, won't interfere with the bearing. I use narrowed bearings on all of my builds, the majority anyway, but it's always good to check and make sure that the bearing covers the oil hole and uh, the radius doesn't interfere with the bearing. For the cylinder heads we went with um, some AFR 205cc Renegade heads. These heads flow uh, almost 320 CFM at lift and they come with some 8 millimeter um, I think 205 or 208 intake valves and 1.6 exhaust valves so good performing cylinder head I try to use uh, either airflow research or trick flow on all my builds I bought these bare with the valves and then custom assembled the valve springs and everything to match. Uh, you can see there I think we're running some manly uh, valve springs with some titanium retainers. Got everything set up. Install heights measured, valve spring pressures measured, coil bind clearance measured, that sort of thing. For the intake manifold, uh, if you look closely this you would think that this is a Victor Jr. intake, but it's actually a, a Ford Racing intake. If you know the uh, the secrets, um, they're cast at the same place, and you can usually buy the Ford Racing intake cheaper than the Edelbrock Victor Jr. This one's been ported by Joe Crane. Um, I built this 363 at the same time that I was building my 311. So I snagged two intake manifolds, had Joe port them both. He ported them each according to the combination. So the intake for the 363 outflowed the intake for the 311. Joe does great work. And uh, we'll see the fruits of, of the labors here in a little bit when we look at the dyno video. Another not so secret of mine is that I use uh, Scott Perkins for uh, my racier carburetors and uh, he does a lot of custom carburetor work for me. This is a um, one of his custom carbs based off of uh, some different parts and uh, I won't go into all that he uses there but uh, I think this one was an 850. And then after the oil pump is primed, uh, we can get the intake manifold on. 
and uh, I always advise uh, priming that pump before the intake goes on so that you can see if you have any lifter issues or you can see if you um, have oiling issues it's better to do it then than to risk tearing up a set of intake gaskets and and causing yourself a, a little bit more trouble you can see there on number one cylinder uh, the intake valve on a small block Ford is the first one from the front. You can see how little of a pattern we have across the valve stem so we know the geometry is good. Then here you see we're using some Crower uh, stainless steel rocker arms. These things are stupid rigid. Uh, you don't lose any valve lift to the deflection on these guys. And uh, some 3 8 trend push rods. And uh, looks like I got the springs set up, uh, stacked up tight there. And some poly locks that are made for a rocker arm stud girdle to keep everything from moving around at RPM. And then it's dyno time. So we got the engine on the cart here. Uh, looks like we made a, a couple pulls without a carb spacer just to see what was going on. Had a Moroso Fox Body oil pan because this is going in my customer's son's uh, Fox Body Mustang that they completely redid from the ground up. And uh, I do all my dyno work at Dale Mears Racing Engines in Buffalo, Kentucky. I've been using Dale for the better part of uh, 18 years. Have uh, just a, a really good group of guys to work with down there. Very sharp, uh, very knowledgeable and experienced. Uh, so I always like going down there because uh, inevitably you get down there and you get kind of flustered. A little bit nervous on dyno day and you got a bunch of guys that will back you up um, that are calm headed and uh, and ready to to throw in some some elbow grease if necessary so are you guys ready for the dyno video Okay, as we usually do, we go from uh, left to right on the dyno sheet, and uh, looks like we pulled to around 72, 7300 RPM. For our oil temperature, we gained, looks like a degree, from 4800 to, um, well, it's not even a full degree. It's just maybe uh, half a degree or so. And then after, um, after it got going, uh, one good symptom of a well designed and big oil pan is that sometimes you get the oil temperature cooled down as air is moving over it so that's what we got there um, water temperature we took that temperature off of the cooling tower for drag race motors we usually pull them at around 130 or 140 degrees 
oil pressure we went up and we started losing a little bit of oil pressure from 6400 on up typically that's what I see with these oil pans that have the front sump um, FE's are horribly bad for uh, dipping the oil pressure um, on those uh, oil pans where they have a, a front sump and a rear sump the oil just pulls in the front and it doesn't get back to where the pickup is and you start losing a little bit of oil pressure uh, air fuel ratio on both sides is excellent you can see how they're balanced out really good that's a, uh, a function of how well the intake manifold was ported and how the runners are balanced looks like we made 517 pound-feet of torque and almost 600 horsepower there very nice combination these 363's do very very well I'm pretty sure this was uh, I think 11 to 1 so this would have been a streetable combination as far as uh, running on pump gas and uh, going on up in compression ratio to 12 and a half or 13 to 1 probably would have gave us another 30 or 40 horsepower on top of that um, just a really straightforward combination straightforward parts nothing real custom except for the camshaft um, and some intake port work so a good solid piece that'll do very well in uh, a Fox body Mustang thank you guys very much for watching this video and uh, I have enough uh, pictures on file to do a video like this for many weeks to come uh, I am prepping an FE block today for another build so I will have a separate video for that I know you, some of you guys like to see the ins and outs of, of the builds so stay tuned for that and I uh, hope you're having a good week if you haven't yet please hit that subscribe button for uh, sneaking up on 8,000 subscribers um, I would love to see 10,000 by the end of the year we'll see how that goes hope you guys are doing well see you soon have, have a good weekend